Today's video, we're going to be checking out the Diamond Select Pacific Rim Uprising. This is Obsidian Fury. It's been 10 years since the Battle of the Breach, and the oceans are still but restless. Vindicated by the victory at the Breach, the Jaeger program has evolved into the most powerful global defense force in human history. The PPDC now calls upon the best and the brightest to rise up and become the next generation of heroes. When the Kaiju threat returns, we will be ready. A towering mecha so powerful its origins are shrouded in secrecy. Meet the deadliest Jaeger to ever walk the earth. With stealth chrome armor plating, twin plasma chainsaws, and a chest-mounted AKM salvo launcher, Obsidian Fury is ready to defend our world or destroy it. This action figure features approximately 16 points of articulation and includes accessories exclusive to the select format. The figure is also sculpted by Big Shot Toy Works. Clearly, Obsidian Fury is taller than Titan Redeemer, but just by how much? Let's go ahead and take the tape measure, put it from the bottom to the top of its head, about right there. There we go. Yeah, about right there. We're going to go ahead and say that the figure stands at a very impressive 9.1 inches in height. Switching that to centimeters, the figure stands at 23.1. And seeing as we mentioned the size difference, why not bring in the two different size Jaegers? This is sort of where you get the most bang out of your buck. Theoretically, Obsidian Fury is really the same price as Titan Redeemer, even though Titan Redeemer is about a third the size smaller. It's sort of the unfortunate trade-off that you get with a lot of these figures if you want to collect the entire wave. It ultimately means sometimes you do get figures that are a little bit smaller and figures that are a little bit taller, but essentially the exact same price. Kind of like Redeemer though, the accessories that come included with Obsidian Fury are just a pair of fists. That's all you're really gonna get. I really don't know what else I would have included with this figure. Maybe the option to swap out the two uh, chainsaws, the two plasma chainsaws, for maybe arms that didn't necessarily have them because you, you can't take these off Maybe if there was the option to pull out an arm and swap it out for a full arm without the chainsaw, I guess that could be something else that the figure could have potentially came included with. But instead, you just get a pair of closed fists. One thing I do like, though, to be fair, and they, they have painted it sufficiently, I like that they put a little bit of detailing there on the front plating of the hand, but they also painted the fingernail right there. See that? It's a rather interesting looking Jaeger because this Jaeger does have almost very noticeable uh, fingernails right there. To swap out the hands, now this is, can be a little bit more tricky because of course you want to make sure you don't accidentally press too much against the chainsaws. There's just enough clearance to get your hand in there and replace them out. Luckily the pegs aren't too stiff but you still have to be very careful when you're putting them in, especially putting hands in seems to be more trickier than taking the hands out that you don't break these as a result. The chainsaw is a softer plastic, but still enough that it could break if you put too much weight against or too much pressure against it. There's the two difference between the hands. Kind of always seem to gravitate more towards the gripping hands because it just makes them a little bit more dynamic when you pose them. But I guess, I guess gripping closed fist hands are are okay as well. This was a figure that I really wanted to get and I was excited when Diamond Select released information that they were going to be finally putting out an Obsidian Fury. One thing though that did plague my mindset when I was planning on picking this guy up was how secure those limbs were going to be. If you've gone back and or maybe initially had watched it, I did a review of the Jaeger Gypsy Avenger which was about this height. I'm not really sure where I've put that one now. 
But the one problem that plagued that figure was extremely loose limbs, both loose limbs in the legs and loose in limbs in the arms. I can pleasantly report, or at the very least, I can report that my figure doesn't have problems with loose legs. It was something that was going to be an issue because it has such thin pegs. If I can move the legs right away, out of the way there. It has just a very thin peg that's attaching essentially the lower waist to the to the main thigh area of the of the Jaeger here. With such only a small peg doing all of that work. Of course, things like legs would be a big problem with, you know, of course if they were loose. Knees are also the same sort of idea. The knees are on a hinge, and they're actually, rather interestingly, on a double hinge. If I can actually show you here. They are on a double hinge. This one leg is a little on the loose side, but it's certainly a far cry from when I had the problems with uh, Gypsy Avenger. I like this one quite a bit in the movie, and translating it to plastic form, I think there's a little less complications to it say versus Titan Redeemer. I think the translation to this one was a little bit better. It has the much needed additional coloring here of the orange in its torso, which if you had sucked that out, you would get a rather bland looking robot. I do like the slate gray that they've given like the overall body here. And even in the movie and looking at it right now, that helmet, the head portion, Really, actually, the whole body reminds me of a Cylon. Perhaps I'm the only one that sees this, but I do see Cylon when I look at this robot design. It also helps, too, the coloring of this particular Jaeger. Um, love, like I said, love the head sculpt. And I'm not just saying that because I like Battlestar Galactica, but I really do like the head sculpt quite a bit. Could it have used some extra paint? Sure, okay. It almost has the opposite problem that the Redeemer had. Redeemer had a lot of dark colors, but could have used some black panel lining. Here, the opposite, they could have actually gone in there and given some lighter outlines around areas like the panel lining around the head and stuff. If you had added black to this, I think it would have just bogged the figure down too much. Maybe a little bit of highlights could have gone a long way, but to its credit, though, it works well. It's got some nice dry brushing here of a silver over top of this slate gray just enough to give a little bit of extra oomph I think to the paint job whereas if they had just left it the darker color I don't think it would have caught the light the way that it does this Jaeger really has a good job of catching the light if it hits a certain way and we look at the back of the figure and we've got this nice additional orange lighting that's running down almost the spinal column here of the of the torso and some additional orange lighting there on the sides as well. It almost seems as if all the paint that they left off of Redeemer gets added then to the uh, Obsidian Fury, and I really don't know why they couldn't have done as much work on this as they did, you know, uh, as much work on the Redeemer as what they did with uh, Fury here. I really do like Fury overall. Now there's a little bit of gray. It doesn't get forfeited completely. You get the gray happening here in the arm area, as well as the sh as the plated guards that are around the arm area. And of course, you've got your chainsaws. You can see that the teeth there, they're not sharp, but they definitely look like they could cut into something substantial with that being, if that was actually spinning. I'm a little worried though, again, about this breaking. If you ever store these away, if you put anything weighted against it, these could bend and or snap. Again, I wish there was a way that these blades could have been removed. So if you didn't want to have Fury displayed with them, you didn't have to. They, it's it, This is like a default look that no matter what you want, it, either way you can't change the blades out. So they're, they're always permanently there. That's a bit of a disappointment, I think. Legs are very well sculpted. Accurate, I think, to the way the movie is. I think it benefits. Somehow it works that the coloring is dark, and yet I can still make out the detailings in the sculpt. This again, and I hate to go back and forth to Titan Redeemer, but Re Titan Redeemer had good sculpts, but it got so lost in that mudded 
swamp green that they used. Somehow using slate here, this darker gray, I can still see everything, like even on the shoulder areas. Could I go in with a panel line? Sure, of course I could, but I feel like adding too much may make the uh, the sculpt look a little too busy. So I'm the, I, I'm on the fence as to whether I actually want to add some additional lining to this because it's got good sculpt. Diamond Select clearly left it off, but I think adding too much could ruin the figure potentially. So I don't know if I would actually go in and change any of that. don't know if I would add any details myself. Posability, we'll go ahead and look at that right now. The head rotates back and forth. It's got a good sufficient bowl joint. You can angle the head back and forth like that. You can hinge it up and down. One problem it does have though, is that the bowl joint, it's a it's essentially like a dumbbell bowl joint. So there's a one right at the bottom and there's one right at the top. If you're not careful, you can move the head over to the side and you have to then kind of go in there and correct it, make sure it's always dead center. The shoulders hinge out and not nearly any bit of the problem that I had with Redeemer, the shoulders are pegged. Let me just show you where that peg is. The peg is right underneath, right there, there we go. And there's a, there's a ball joint there and there's a ball joint that attaches right underneath this part of the, of the figure. So it moves on its own. You can actually move it independently up and down as well. Uh, so the arms do move forward. They do move back. They move out, has a swivel on the bicep, has a double hinge on the elbow, upper torso ball joint, nothing on the lower waist, legs split out, has a forward and a back, double hinge on the knee. And for the feet, the feet are actually rather interesting. They move back and forth, they hinge up and down, but there's just enough clearance under, under that cuff area of the leg just enough clearance that you can bring those feet forward if you want to have it more in a lunging pose like if you want to have it running forward it does also have peg holes which also aids if you want to have it more like like i said in a running pose you could you could actually accomplish that versus the titan redeemer which unfortunately did not have that so i really do like that it's not something you could there's not enough stability, unfortunately, that if you wanted to get it to pose on its own, I think I would still make use of a display stand. It seems to balance okay. Like you can get it at, like that's a pretty cool looking pose if you wanted to get it displayed like that. It stands okay, but I would still make use of a display stand just in case. At the cost of sounding maybe a little bit old, I'm gonna say Obsidian Fury looked sick in Pacific Rim Uprising. And I don't mean health sick either. Really like the look, the sleek design of this Jaeger in the film. And I think Diamond Select translated that well to plastic form. Can't help but also feel as if I might be liking this one because it also reminds me of a Cylon. Not the silly looking Cylons from the 80s, but the Cylons in the later Battlestar Galactica reboot. I like the dark slate gray that they've given the plastic here and that dry brushing of silver really helps just to add a little bit of extra depth. It's funny that I'm so passionate about the Obsidian Fury and seems so lackluster when it came to Titan Redeemer. Titan Redeemer really missed the mark when it came to some additional much needed paint applications. Obsidian Fury is quite the opposite. It doesn't have a whole lot of extra paints above the gray that we're looking at here, but those little pops of orange really help just to bring everything together. I'm also pleasantly surprised to see that he doesn't have, or it doesn't have, the standing problems that I had with Gypsy Avenger. That figure, unfortunately, was way too loose in the, in the knees and as well as the thighs, and I can pleasantly and happily say I don't have that problem with Obsidian Fury. At the very least, my figure doesn't have any problem. Mileage may vary from figure to figure, but I hope across the board the limbs are all very tight on this particular figure, but it is of the ones that we've looked at so far, I think Obsidian Fury might be my favorite. And that's of the first wave and the second wave. Obsidian Fury might be my all-time favorite of the figures that they've released. Still, we have to go back and have a look at the Guardian Bravo. Maybe Guardian Bravo might be a little bit nicer. Time will certainly tell. And you guys will just have to stay tuned and watch my review of Guardian Bravo to see if I've changed my opinions at all. 
Speaking of opinions, if you managed to pick up any one of the Pacific Rim Uprising figures from the folks over at Diamond Select, let me know down below what you think of the figures. Also, when you're while you're at it, why don't you hit that little subscribe button down below if you haven't done so already. And while you're also at it, a lot of expectations. While you're also at it, why don't you swing by the home page and see if there's any videos that you may have missed along the way. With the sheer number of reviews that I'm doing on a regular basis, there is a good chance, a good possibility that you may have missed something along the way. Best place to fix that all is by heading over to the home page and checking out the video section. You'll see probably Redeemer just before this video, and you may have also seen a couple of videos before this that you didn't even know I posted. So, but, so you're welcome. It's the least I could do. I feel the need to help you guys wherever and whenever I can. We're going to have a look at the Guardian Bravo in the upcoming review. And of course, other videos will be coming your way. So make sure you got your eyes peeled. Ooh, that's gross. Eyes peeled on this channel. As always, guys, thanks for watching as you always do. And I'll see you next time.